What's up guys? Good afternoon. Welcome back. Um, today we're going to talk about why I haven't been uploading as much and then we're going to go over some, or probably first, we're going to go over some drivability of the stock 475 compound setup that I have. I kind of want to do this video so I can also go back and watch this when I upgrade to probably a 63 millimeter manifold charger. So it'll be a good comparison video that I can do later and also for those of you wondering about the stock added turbo kit, whether it be an S475, S476, 480, whatever, uh, you'll, you'll get some drivability comparison. So I'm going to drive around, let the truck warm up a little bit and then I will get back to you. Alright guys, here's just a light little acceleration. You can see the spool is just great. There's no lag. EGTs are great. Again, just light acceleration converters unlocked. It's about to lock though here at 50. EGTs will go up a little bit, still not bad. So we are cruising about 60 we're going downhill it's about to transition back to uphill though and i'm gonna get on it a little bit obviously the converter's a lot going uphill the egts are going to be a little bit higher but we're off the gas completely hardly any smoke hardly any lag and she's got a lot more in her i didn't lay into it all the way but that you can't really ask for more than that. Low as the converter would be locked in overdrive. With a large single, this would take forever to spool with this low RPM and no air moving. But these twins still get up and go. ready to go no matter the rpm obviously the higher rpm the easier it is for them too but i mean that was hardly any lag at all hardly any smoke very clean tunes i mean it, it, it's in tuning too but singles are simpler they're less to work on they take up less room in the engine bay but for a daily driver you know you really can't beat it the only reason I'd want to go with a large single is for competition use for drag racing if I didn't drive it on the street. Alright guys, cruise control set, 65 miles an hour, just under 10 psi boost, EGTs at 600, maintained in speed. Alright guys, and now we're going to have an uh, uphill kind of medium acceleration and I'm going to let you watch the uh, each tease and boost as well.
bad axle U joint, so had to take everything apart anyway. So I went ahead and replaced the U joint and replaced both hubs while I was at it just because it's cheap insurance because I have brand new hubs on there now. I know exactly when I put them on, how old they are, how many miles I have on them, yada yada yada. So fix all that, go driving down the road and didn't fix the, fix the grinding issue. So then went back to the shop and I had him check all the fluids from the front diff all the way back to the rear diff including you know oil coolant uh, transmission transfer case everything so we got to the transfer case and there was a ton of metal and metallic flakes and some chunks in the fluid um, took the transfer case part couldn't find anything but it was replaced under warranty so no big deal put a new uh, new remanufactured transfer case and that's eh, good to go now Everything's good. So get going down, driving down the road, and still having issues. Not grinding issues now, but still having issues. I'm having to push the gas a little bit harder to get up to speed and maintain speed, which is easy to tell with boosting EGTs because the EGTs were higher than they used to be, just to like maintain 70 miles an hour, let's say. So I uh, took it back to the shop. It was too cold to work on it outside. So uh, the shop that I go to kind of lets me help him out and obviously I still pay him for his time but you know I like, like working on things myself so we uh, jack it up and I'm pretty sure that it's a frozen caliper because I'd smelled brake uh, burning brake and sure enough trucks in neutral parking brakes not set and the left rear is just locked solid so we replaced the caliper and that's what the past two months with this truck has been and hopefully I don't have any more issues coming up um, I do have that coolant leak from that little hose that all the O6s have problems with. It's not bad. It only happens when it's really cold, so I'm hoping as the weather warms up that it'll stop leaking and I don't have to worry about that for a while because i got to take the turbos off to do that. So I'll replace it when I upgrade the turbo. That's the plan anyway. The truck might have different plans for me, but um, we'll, we'll see how things progress. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this upload. Please stay tuned for more hit that subscribe button hit the like button drop a comment down below of what you'd like to see if you like this video things that i can improve uh, if you like, don't like me rambling if you do like me rambling talking about jesus talking about trucks bringing them both together uh just let me know see ya